I have been using MacBook since 2009, and since then I've picked up a lot of applications that just make Mac life easier. So I thought I would do a video with my 10 favorite Mac apps. Some of them are free, and some of them cost money. But I believe they are all worth the money. I'll put links for everything in the description below. Let's level up. Let's dive right into it. I use many different browsers, specifically because I want to keep all my job-related links and browsing history completely separate from my private one. The problem then becomes that when you click a link in an email or a document, it will always open up in your standard browser. I would then have to copy the link over into the right browser. And this is where Bumper comes in. Bumper registers itself as a browser on your Mac, and then you make Bumper your standard browser. Then when you click a link, this little pop-up appears and you can pick whatever browser you want to open it in. This is extremely smart and it quickly becomes second nature for you to select your browser when you click a link. Easy. Mac OS comes with horrible window management. If you have never used anything else, you probably don't know it, but this is one area where Windows has just been significantly better for years. But in comes this little program called Magnet. Magnet lets you resize windows by just dragging them to the edge of the screen. So if you want your window to take up half the screen, you just drag it to the edge. It also has a lot of keyboard shortcuts to place your window just where you want it. But what if you don't want to drag your windows around all the time? For that, I use Swish. Swish is another window manager, but you use it with your trackpad. Swish does many of the same things as Magnet, but you activate it with your trackpad instead. Move the mouse to the top of the window you want to move, and just swish with two fingers to where you want the window. Swish two fingers to the right, and the window snaps to the right. Swish to the left, the window goes there. If you hold shift while swishing, the screen gets divided into even more sections for you to use. The combination of magnet and swish gives me all the control I want over window placement. Now, let's talk about photos. I have a lot of family photos, going all the way back to the beginning of 1997, when I got my first digital camera. PhotoSweeper scans through the folders you pointed at and finds all the duplicate photos you have. But it also lets you import Lightroom catalogs and Apple photo libraries, and it compares everything. It doesn't just compare file names, it actually looks at a section of each photo and compares that to all the other photos. Honestly, what it does is pure digital magic. When it finds duplicates, it shows them to you and you decide if you think it's a duplicate or not and you also decide what photo to keep. It's really brilliant. It did take quite a long time for my Mac to crunch through all the photos. Actually, it took a couple of days, but in the end, it was worth it. So if your photos is a mess and you want to locate duplicates, I highly recommend this program. Now, if only there was one for videos as well. If you know something similar for videos, please let me know in the comments. Another and far more simple photo app that I use is called, let me see if I can pronounce this, H-E-I-C Converter. It does exactly what the name suggests. You drag in an H-E-I-C photo and it converts it to JPEG. This is great for those quick photos you want to transfer from your iPhone to your Mac using AirDrop. You will get those photos in H-E-I-C format on your Mac. But if you want to send them in an email to someone who can't open that file format, you need to convert it. HEIC Converter makes this process really simple. Now, let's talk about security. There's a lot of different password managers out there. I use 1Password, which is one of the more expensive solutions. It has a subscription model. Other options could be LastPass, which has a free version. If you are unfamiliar with password managers, what they do is create insane and safe passwords for you. And every time you need to fill out the password, it just grabs the password from the program so you don't need to remember it yourself. You do need to remember the master password to access the program itself. The reason why I myself switched from LastPass to 1Password is because of the completely seamless integration on all platforms. On Mac and on iOS, it just works out of the box and it just takes over as your main password manager. You need to install a plugin for the browser you use, and then you are good to go with filling out passwords in your browser on your computer as well. On Windows, I find that the 1Password browser plugin acts a bit slower than on Mac, but it's still perfectly usable and easy to set up. Another great program that I would also put in the security category is Clean My Mac 10. Though it does do a lot more than security, 
Clean My Mac 10 helps keep your Mac running smoothly by removing clutter and optimizing performance. It cleans out cache files, language files you don't use, and makes sure that when you uninstall a program, everything from that program gets removed. We've all experienced finding configuration files left on our hard drive from programs we uninstalled years ago. Clean My Mac 10 solves this. But one other thing that Clean My Mac 10 also does is perform regular scans for malware, which is great these days when we are seeing more and more targeted attacks against Mac OS. Now let's talk backups. Mac OS comes with Time Machine, which is great for general backup security, but you can configure it very much and you just have to trust that it works. So in comes Chronosync. Chronosync does so many things that I'm going to do a full video just on that and on how I use it. But summed up, it lets you back up between folders, external hard drives, and network drives. You can make bootable backups, full system backups, or just pick the files you want to back up. It verifies the backups it makes, and there's an nearly endless amount of ways to schedule backups. As an example, every time I plug in my main external drive, Chronosync will back up any changes made to it to my network storage and another external drive I have here at home. The possibilities are endless. Now let's talk about that Mac menu bar. A menu bar that has become even more relevant to talk about with the new notch on the new MacBook Pros. Bar 10 to 4 completely takes over the menu bar and lets you fully customize it. You decide what icons are shown and when. You can have icons only show on mouse over, you can completely remove icons, you can add spacing, you can add sections, and a lot more. It's a functionality that should have been part of Mac OS, but isn't. Bar 10 to 4 really helps me remove clutter on the menu bar and ensures that only things I actually use are taking up the limited screen space on my 14 inch MacBook Pro. And finally, another great tool for keeping structure on your Mac is called Post Haste. It's a very simple program that lets you set up project templates for folder structures. I use it for my YouTube projects. So instead of having to copy folders and manually create them every time I start a new video project, I just use Post Haste to set up the entire folder structure and create the base documents I need, like a text file for my notes. It saves me a bit of time and makes sure that all projects are structured the same way. And that's it. That's my top 10 apps at the moment, all of which make my digital life a lot easier. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like it, feel free to let me know in the comments. And subscribe to the channel if you want to support what I do here. I hope you will be back again soon. See you in my next video.